Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Well, today DJI released the latest version of their action camera called the Action 4, and I was lucky enough to be invited into their secret NDA group a couple of weeks ago where I got that camera early. I've been out testing it ever since, giving them feedback, and putting together clips to explain exactly what this brand new camera can do. Now today, I'm going to do an unboxing and an overview, and it's going to seem kind of weird because I've had the camera for a couple of weeks, so it means I've already got other clips that I'll be posting on the channel going through all the features and functions the new camera provides. Now I have the original Osmo Action here, the Action 2 here, the Action 3 here, and the brand new Action 4, which is what I'll unbox and do an overview of today. Now, I have to talk a little bit about the Heritage because DJI is one of those companies that when they enter a market like an action camera or drones or really anything, they look at the market and they think, we can do better. So when they came out with the original Osmo Action, a lot of you don't realize this, but if you own an action camera, you should be thanking DJI for this front screen because nobody did that before. And that's a huge innovation because if you're using an action camera, it's almost impossible to frame yourself in the shot. So having a front screen like this gives me access to the features. It also gives me a view of what's going on in front of the camera. So that was a major innovation. The Action 2, even though people were kind of up in, up in arms about certain aspects of it, I love this camera because it's composable, which means I can snap a screen on, I can snap an extra battery on, I can charge it, take it out in the field, I can use just the head if I want to record, so I love this camera. Then the Action 3 came out. What did they do with the Action 3? A bigger sensor, much more robust camera, easy magnetic mounts on the bottom, you can flip between horizontal and portrait incredibly easy, wonderful camera. They've improved the optics on this, the imaging package was improved on this, so I thought to myself, when the Action 4 is coming, what could they possibly improve on? Well, the honest answer is pretty much everything. So I'm gonna get into this today. We're gonna to do the unboxing just to show you what comes with the product. I'll talk about the features and functions and the specifications which are really important because there are really two aspects to an action camera and it's right in the title, the action part, and the camera part. So it has to be rugged, it has to be flexible, it has to have other features that apply to an outdoor enthusiast that's gonna use a camera like this that's not comfortable strapping a DSLR camera on their skis when they're jumping around in the snow. That's what this is built for. But the camera part is super important as well because just because it's rugged and you can take it with you in the outdoors, if you can't capture a great image, stabilize that image and give you beautiful HDR imaging and color processing, it's really not worth it. So what DJI did was focus on both of those areas and improve both of those areas. And I'll get into that as I go through the unboxing. But anyway, I'm rambling on. I definitely want to get inside here and see what it's all about. So let me open the package. You can see I haven't touched it yet. It's completely shrink wrapped. And I've got my slicer right here that I love so much. It's a, a composite slicer. It's better than a razor. I use it to open everything I'm going to demo here. So let me cut that wrapping up. Oh boy, this is exciting. Man, I get so excited whenever I get new technology because I want to just get inside and see what's going on. And this is going to be a wonderful product. So this is what the box look like now, looks like. Now I've got an adventure combo here, which is one of the ways they're going to sell this product. They have it in a couple of different uh, variations. This one's got accessories that would work well if you're an outdoorsman. Now, I kind of consider myself an adventurer, so I think this is the perfect mix for me. But there are other variations of the product out there, and they've introduced a ton of accessories as well to help you use this product a little more effectively out there in the field. So let me see how I open the box. I'm going to look foolish here if I can't figure it out quickly. And of course I can't figure it out quickly. So I'm going to have to start slicing because I got to get the box open. Oh, well, look, wait, hold on a second. There we go. There's a flap on the side. Thank goodness. <laughs> Anyway, an open here would be nice on that. All right, before I get into it, there's the picture of the camera on the front, all kinds of specifications on the back if you care about that kind of stuff. If you're like me, you'll probably read them or glance at them, but you want to get inside the box and see what's going on. So when you open up the box, here are two boxes inside, the Action 4 and the accessory. So let me slide those out. Oh, there's the selfie stick. Okay, and then there's nothing else inside the box. So let's set that aside for now. Put that over here with you guys. And then let me take a look at the selfie stick first, because one of the things they did, which I really have to experiment with, is they've built in the feature that makes the selfie stick invisible, which is kind of cool. Now, you normally only see that on 360 degree cameras because you've got the selfie stick below it, but this one, it makes the selfie stick invisible. I guess if it's in front of you, you'll see that length of selfie stick and it'll disappear. So that's one of the things I'm definitely going to test when I get out there in the field with it. Wow, this is a beautiful, look at the selfie stick. Oh, look how long that is. <laughs> I never expected that. The little handle right there exploded into a 
Geez, it's gotta be a 40 inch, 50 inch selfie stick. That's fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this. And the selfie stick has got a quarter inch 20 on the bottom. It's got a little loop right there you can put the hand loop on. So if you're out near water, you definitely wanna have a wrist strap on. And then the top is a standard three finger mount that's used on all the GoPro products and a lot of the action cameras out there in the market. So wonderful product. It's also got a nice rubber grip on the bottom of it. I mean, you could use this with pretty much anything you can mount in a three finger mount, but only use it with the action four. All right, so I'm not gonna stand that up because it's gonna go rolling off the table. So let me set that down. All right, what else we got? All right, that's the action four. Let me save that for the end. That's the that's the dessert. Let's see what kind of accessories come with this. These are a lot easier to open than the main box. Boy, I can't believe it took me that long to get that box open. All right, anyway, so there, I'll shake everything out and we'll take a look. Up oh, desiccant. Make sure you get rid of this desiccant. It's dangerous stuff around kids and animals and pets and all the rest of it. Now, if you're like me, if you're careful, I keep a large Ziploc bag of desiccant on top of my refrigerator. And I do that because it's the best way to dry out electronics if they get wet. So if you drop your phone in water, you drop electronics in water, as long as it's not salt water, pull the battery out of it immediately, throw it in a Ziploc bag, throw a bunch of those desiccant packages in there because what they do is absorb water. They take all the water in the atmosphere and, and take it internally and that'll help dry out your product. But other than that, get rid of them. Don't leave them laying around. All right, so inside the accessory package, we got a ton of manuals here. So make sure you read through the manuals. And I know this is a boring exercise, but I love that companies like DJI still include manuals with their product because I like to read through those because even though I can figure out a lot of the features intuitively and I've read a lot of the online forums, I always find something in the manual that I didn't expect. So read through that to make sure you get the best value out of the product. All right, what else is in here? Well, we got a sticker which is two DJI stickers. That's kind of cool. Put that on your, your car, put that on your window, whatever you want, and just brag about the fact that you're using DJI products. You've got a USB-C to USB-C charging cable. Now I'll get into the charging capabilities just in a minute, but it charges through a USB-C PD. It's gotta be at least 33 watts, I believe. A 65 watt charger would be better. PD helps you fast charge the product. Now, this may astound you, but you can fully charge this unit in about 50 minutes, so less than an hour. That goes to the action part. You wanna get out the door quickly. When you're out there, you wanna recharge stuff quickly so you can continue to shoot. That's part of the action, so I can recharge it in 50 minutes. All right, I've got a bunch of things here that uh, are mounts, and I'll get into these. They're gonna go flying when I open it. I know it already. All right, I got a couple of different mounts here. That's a hood cover, I guess. Oh, a lens cover for the front of the camera. That's really nice. And a couple of circular things. I'll have to read the instructions on those. And again, I didn't open it. This first time I'm looking at it, so don't give me grief. And then here's the mount. So what you've got with the mount, let me get rid of the bag, nothing else in there, okay? The mount, again, is a standard two finger that works with the three finger mount, and that's the magnetic and clamping assembly that'll hold the camera in place. Now that's similar to what's going on here, right? Same time of clamping assembly, but here you've got electrical connections between the two modules. With these cameras, once it's in the mount, it basically mounts clamps on the bottom like that. Now it looks like it's a different clamp, Nope, it's the same clamp, so there you go. If you've got the Action 3, you can use the same mounting system with the Action 4. So that's really nice because the company could have definitely said, you know what, we're coming out with a new camera. We can make a couple extra bucks if we make the mount just a little bit wider so they can't use the older accessories. They've got to rebuy all the accessories. They didn't do that. So kudos to you, DJI, for thinking of us as consumers. All right, so one other thing that I'm really interested in, and I had one of these for the Action 3. I still have it, actually. I didn't lose it is the battery bank. And I think this is a wonderful thing to have because it allows you to put three batteries inside the battery bank, close it up, it protects your batteries when you're out in the field, you don't have a battery in your pocket like you used to do with your action cameras, it gets all felt in the connections and stuff, and then you can charge it through a single USB-C connection, it'll go through and charge the batteries in sequence. So there's your charging bank. So all those things together, a great accessory pack for an adventurer like me. Now let's get into the camera. Boy, I'm excited to see what this is all about. And again, DJI just thinks through what I'm gonna do with the camera out in the field. And I think all the improvements they've built into this product are gonna really wow you. So let's see what I can get out of here. Oh, it slides out nice, look at that. All right, I don't think I need this box. Let me get rid of that. There's the camera and here's the base. All right, so let's see what we got here. Let me get the camera out of the package first. Boy, I'll tell you this, you need like an engineering degree to figure out how to open these bags. I don't want to cut them because I don't want to wreck anything. Oh, there we go. All right, so, wow. All right, so <laughs> just one second here, one second. Boy, this is a beaut, it's a beaut. It looks very similar to the Action 3. It's got the Action 4 moniker on the front right there and I'll do some close-ups of this. But if you look at it side by side, I'm going to say it's it's the same size as the Action. I don't know if you can see that. 
The Action 3 and the Action 4 are about the same, exactly the same size by my measurements. Even the same logoing on the side, same mounting structure on the bottom. And what else did I get in here? Oh, the cage. Okay, so it comes with a cage, which is really nice. And again, another difficult package to open, but I'll get it. Just hang in there. I'm very persistent. Being an adventurer, you got to be persistent. Here we go. All right. Oh, there's stuff inside the cage. All right, so you get the cage, which wraps around the camera, and that gives you that really secure mounting outside of the camera, so it protects the outside. This is durable as heck on its own, but if you have it in the cage, it just gives you a lot more protection for the camera. Let me get this guy out of the way. And then a couple other mounts, all wrapped in their own insanely protectable packages here. All right, so let me get these guys out. This is uh, this is an exercise here. I'd like to time somebody doing this to see how long it takes you to open it up. We're even gonna have a contest. All right, so there's another one, and looks like two mounting knobs. So all the gear you need to use this thing right out of the box is included. So I mentioned before that the Adventurer kit comes with one mount. You actually get two mounts in there, so you've got two mounts you can use. You've got a sticky pad for your helmet, so if you're a skier, motorcyclist, whatever you're going to use a helmet for, maybe you're a spelunker and you're underground, stick this on your helmet. It's got the nice curve, so it'll hang onto your helmet well. And again, a three-finger mount there, so that's a mount for an adventurer like me. I won't be spelunking anytime soon, but kind of cool. All right, so there are the two mounts, and here are the two knobs that hold it in there. Oh, one thing I didn't mention, the two mounts have different depths, right? So you can see one's closer and one's further away. So depending on your mount, you may want to use either one of those. Let's talk a little bit about the camera because that's kind of where we're here for. So let me get the cage out of the way. All right. So what have they changed? The action part of it is important. So I've mentioned already that you can charge it in 50 minutes. That's really, really quick compared to other cameras in the market that may take 90 minutes, an hour to charge them. Some you can quick charge it to 50% in a few minutes, but then you're gonna be charging it all day long. So having the battery bank with you with two extra batteries means when you deplete one, pop it in the bank, pull out another battery, continue to film, you know that the battery you popped in the bank at a minimum will charge at 50 minutes. So you've got plenty of time to actually film while you're using the camera because you can film for 160 minutes. So if you do the math on that, 50 minutes to charge it, 160 minutes of filming, I could film indefinitely as long as I've got a power source with me out in the field. All right, so the action part of it is also enhanced by the fact that it goes down to a depth of 18 meters. Now, if I'm doing the math in my head, that's about 54 feet underwater. That's deep. That's plenty deep. Most commercial divers are over 100 feet, but you know, commercial divers are not really what we're doing. We're doing pleasure diving. So pleasure divers go down to maybe 60 or 70 feet. I used to dive a lot off the Jersey Shore. You can go to 60 feet for 60 minutes and that's it. So 54 feet takes me almost to the bottom of my depth. And that's fantastic. 18 meters, you can take it in a swimming pool. You can take it out with you. If you're scuba diving, that's a wonderful depth to have a waterproof camera. And they're going to make a case that goes down even deeper if you need that. The other thing that's nice about it is they built it to be incredibly resilient for hot weather and cold weather. And that goes to the action part of it because if you're outside and you're doing anything with action in it, you're either skiing in the Alps or you're skiing in a very cold environment or you're out in a really hot environment. So this camera will handle temperatures of minus 20 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. And that's a temperature range of minus four degrees to 113 degrees Fahrenheit for those of us in the US. So if you think about those two temperature differentiation, you've got the Alps, which is freezing cold, or the tundra, and you've got maybe a dune buggy in the Mojave Desert. So you can use it in both of those environments and not have to worry about it. A lot of other action cameras on the market couldn't handle hot temperatures. So if you took it out in hot temperatures and you tried to record for any length of time, it would actually shut the camera off. With this one, it's gonna handle that extra heat. So fantastic camera for that. Now, as far as the camera goes, that's the other side of the equation that's extremely important. It's just as important as the action side. With the camera, they've increased the sensor size. So it's now a one over 1.3 inch sensor, which is a big sensor for an action camera. But a sensor alone doesn't tell the whole story because collecting that information on the sensor, which is a lot of light hitting the sensor, that's a lot of information that has to be processed behind the sensor through the imaging package. They've also upgraded the imaging package on this to handle the speed of the delivery of that data from the sensor back and the processing of that data. So they built in things like HDR. It can record 4K video at up to 120 frames per second with an unbelievable 155 degree field of view and provides both 10-bit and D-Log M color profiles. It's also a lot better with low light conditions. So it's handling that really well and it does color temperature adjustments on the fly. So if you're going from very light, env light environments to very dark environments, the camera can sense that, it makes the adjustments on the fly. If you get back out in the brightness, it makes the adjustments again. So what it does is it takes the burden off of you 
of paying attention to the camera, making adjustments on your own. You can just go out there and have your fun on whatever activity you're having and let the camera make the adjustments it needs to. All right, a couple other things that kind of go to camera and action together are the ability to stabilize footage because anytime you're using an action camera, there's action going on, which means you're moving around, things are happening, you're in a dune buggy, you're driving your bicycle, you're, you're skiing down a mountain, I don't know what you're doing, skateboarding, whatever you're doing, things are shaking. So the camera has to help you stabilize that shake. And they built two features in here that are artificially intelligent that help to resolve any kind of image stabilizations problem. The first one is called Rocksteady. And what that does is internally there are gyroscopes in the camera that are constantly monitoring the jostling of the camera. And they're making adjustments to the imaging to counterbalance exactly those jostling. So it's basically taking the image and moving it around and counterbalancing the movements of the camera to keep it rock steady. That's the name. They picked a good name for it. The second thing this camera has built in is horizon steady, which is constantly wrestling with keeping a level horizon in front of you. So if you move the camera this way, it's going to adjust the image. And the way it does that, I think, is it's cropping. It probably captures a bigger image, it has to capture a bigger image, and then crop in a tiny bit so it's got room to joggle that inside joggle, that's a word I made up, but jiggle, jiggle joggle, whatever it is, it's going to move that image around inside the camera to keep that horizon perfectly level, and that's perfect for you if you're an action fan, because if you're out there in the field and the camera's bouncing around, it's going to keep it steady, and it's going to try and keep that horizon as level as possible in front of you. So if you're out in a canoe, if you're on skis, if you're out in a car bouncing around on a road, it's going to give you an incredibly stable image. So I, I think they've done everything they can to enhance the action side and really enhance the camera side because if you compare this to any action camera on the planet today, it wins on both counts by a wide margin. So when I talked about this being the new king of the hill, I really believe they built a camera here that others have to play catch up on. And I bet you're gonna see other camera companies scrambling to come up with innovations that kind of match what DJI's got in the brand new Action 4 in the next couple of months, if they can even catch up. Now, what I'm gonna do next is, after this clip is finished, I'll be outside filming an awful lot. I'm gonna be testing the Rock Steady, the Horizon Steady, the image capture capabilities, the underwater capabilities, all the things you care about with the camera. And I'll have other clips posting really soon that give you good examples of how that stuff works. But for today, I just wanted to go through the unboxing and a brief overview of the camera because you can tell that I love DJI as a company. I'm a fan of technology. I'm not really a fan of DJI, even though I like the company a lot. I'm a fan of technology. And I don't care what brand it is. If you put a camera like this on the market, I'm gonna fall in love with you as a company because the engineering behind what it takes to build a product like this is immense. Between the engineering, the marketing, the research, the development, all the things that go into a small camera like this, it's not an easy feat. It's a moon launch in a lot of ways. And I think DJI's really hit it out of the park with the Action 4. So that's all I really had for today. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and overview. I appreciate you watching. I promise you there's more clips coming. And until next time, as always, <laughs> happy flying. Mm -hmm.